Ooh, look, I look up. I heard no. I mean, I. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just threw his life's wig. Damn it. Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. I I gotta find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. Uh-oh. August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Boy, am I nervous. Right? Oh, hi, Ichi. I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say to you, it's kind of nice. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. Says a lot about you and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you know the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe him my current job to him. Well, actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over. My life, everything, it's all over. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death! Despair! Oh! <laughs> I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. Nick! Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty! Tell them I'm guilty! What? Give me the death, death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I- I'm finished! Finished! I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Oh, who took away- who took her away from me? Nick, who did this? Aw, oh, Nick, you gotta tell me, who took my baby away? Hmm, the person responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspaper say it was you. My name is Phoenix. Right. <laughs> Here's the story. The first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the Butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has a terrible look. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I owe him one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. Okay. August 3rd, 10 a.m., District Court number 2. Poor 
court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Um, the defense is ready, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Larry, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor, I am um, a little nervous. Conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge for your client's sake. I hope you can control your nerves. Can you feel your honor? Mr. Wright, given your circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, your honor. <laughs> the test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. The defendant is Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me what's the victim's name. Um, I know this one, but uh, the case will pull it cover to cover so many times. It's, uh, wait. Oh. No. No way, I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name. Oh, the victim? Oh, of course, I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot. <laughs> Temporarily. I, I think I feel a migraine coming on. What? The victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it off and do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Because she was the cause of death, loss, loss of blood due to torture, hit by an object. She was struck once by a blood object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. <laughs> well then. First a question for the prosecution. Mr. Yes, yeah, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? murder weapon was this statue of the finger. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue. The statue in the shape of the finger. It's rather heavy. Statue added to the court records. Right? Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during this trial. Evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The well, prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. Uh, you'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. 
Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Oh, he really gets excited easily. This could be bad. Oh lord. <laughs> hmm. Mr. Butts. Is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together! We were Romeo and Juliet! Cleopatra and Mark Anthony! Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls. Or seeing me ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts. What you describe is generally what we mean what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the other day before the murder. Or the day before the murder. What do you mean one of them? Lies! All of it! Lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in prison until the day before she died. Hmm. And she appears to have returned the day before she before the murder. Dude, no way! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! You can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? I think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, there is a way of letting this off. Oh lord. Should I stop him from answering and wait and see what happens? My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to the case. Irrelevant. That cheating she dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Ye oh. <laughs> I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder. Did you not? Well, did you? Or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Uh-oh, he went. go to the victim's apartment that day. Oh, well, that simplifies matters. Oh, <laughs> that simplifies matters. Who was your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Uh, Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, 
Oh, excuse me. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers. The victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Switz to the stand. Mr. Switz, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is that correct? Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witness testimony. Witness's account. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. <laughs> Thinking it was strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I called in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I mean, I remember the time exactly. It's 1 p.m. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. Didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Swit used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your pursuit. Blackout record. Okay. No, Mr. Wright. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. <laughs> you may begin your cross examination. Cross examination, Your Honor? Right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? <laughs> Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? He's not a lawyer. You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's a bond to be. There's bound to be a contradiction there. First, find the contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradiction evidence, the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay.
Okay. So... You found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? <laughs> yes, it was 1 p.m. For certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, nobody to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? <laughs> oh, <laughs> bad luck. Oh, <laughs> is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Switch? Why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? Uh, I, uh, well, I, gee, that's a really good question. <laughs> good job, right? Why to put him on the spot? That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Okay, I'm doing good. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I remember now. <laughs> Would you care to give your testimony again? <laughs> you straight lie? Alright. Let's go. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a, of a tape program. Of a tape program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. <laughs> Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Hi. You know what to do. I've got this one. Alright, so... You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time and it was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was one thing. Hmm. Electricity to Miss Stone's building was out for noon. Oh! right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. <laughs> this record proves it. <laughs> you couldn't have heard a television or a video. <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> the defense has a point. Wait, the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Switch? Oh, no, I find it quite puzzling myself. <laughs> quite. <laughs> uh, wait, I, I remember now. <laughs> Mr. Switch, is the court to prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning? These constant corrections are harming your credibility. No, oh, that and you seem rather distraught. <laughs> Oh, that was the judge talking. <laughs> uh... <laughs> My apologies, Miss. My apologies, Your Honor. <laughs> it, er, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Schmidt. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. <laughs> Sweaty. Okay. Actually, I didn't hear the time I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment. It wasn't there. 
Mm, yeah. A murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. <laughs> that must have been what I saw. <laughs> I saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. <laughs> Actually, I didn't hear the time I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon, the killer use... Alright, so let's see. So this is a clock, a statue, a statue in the shape of the thing that's Wait. Wait, just a moment. Oh shit. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was this Ooh! The murder weapon was a clock. It was the statue. Now how is that supposed to be a clock? What? Why Why are you with your objections <laughs> and your evidence? Just who do you think you are? <laughs> Just answer the question, Mr. Spit. That's even a real name. Hey, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. <laughs> Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Perry. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch, you just tilt it, and it says the time out loud. Wow! Okay. As it doesn't look like a clock, it's- but as it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So, the murder weapon was a table clock, after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with the testimony now? Mm, I guess not. There was a clock on the table soon. So no problem. Or there was a clock on the scene, so no problem. Wait, are you out of your mind? Uh oh. The clock doesn't look like a clock at all. The witness couldn't have possibly known it was a clock, just by seeing it. He said himself he never entered the apartment. It wasn't his testimony. Hey, you're right. Is something the matter? Does the defense have anything to add? <laughs> yes, yes, Your Honor. <laughs> the only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet, the witness's testimony Yet, the witness testified that... I can't it. Yet, the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm. Indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he, when he saw the apartment, knew the victim. Uh, he had, he had to run to the apartment. You're lying! You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. What? Did his hair just jump? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah? <laughs> Prove it. Prove I went in there. <laughs> I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock. And the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. Uh-oh. That was the sound of her. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. So you lied. Mr. Swift. The sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. The voice gets burned into your head. That's why you were so certain about the time. What? What the mean? What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless. Conjecture. 
defenseless. Just look at the witness's face. Uh, uh, the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, back that day, I never. <laughs> look, I, the clock, I heard no. I mean, I, it's, uh, <laughs> he just threw his wife's wig. Okay, wait. <laughs> I hate you. It was him, I tell you. I saw him. He killed her, and he should burn. Burn, give him the death. Oh my god. Order! Order in the court! I say. Your Honor, I, uh, moment please. <laughs> there isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense claims. You swear? Your Honor, you claim the sound, you claim the sound of what was heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is writing on this. I better think it through carefully. Now Mr. Schwitter is definitely this clock. Uh-oh. Examine the clock's batteries. X. The neighbors try sound the clock. Let's sound the clock now. Here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. That is kind of weird. Well, he is the th oh, he is the thinker after all. So you heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely, the, the discrepancy between what Mr. Swift heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Schmidt, or Swift, try to talk your way out of this one. <laughs> you forgot one thing. <laughs> While it may seem like this clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing! <laughs> How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? <laughs> you can't prove that, you don't have a case. <laughs> How am I gonna prove that? Uh, the Wait, okay, so... Time of death. Right? It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross examination of Mr. Frank Schwitt. <laughs> I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens! <laughs> You treat me like this criminal. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. Uh, I almost had a Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Swit. I mean, she. Listen up, Ray. Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think! But cheap. It's over. 
I can't prove that Clark is slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time, don't waste time doubting facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and then through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Give it up the reason in your head to prove. Right? Right? Can you think of a reason to why the clock can play out as slow? Wait! Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you said the clock is already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Alright, so... Attorney's badge, no one will believe... Time of death, 7.39. Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court, in the court record that I can prove my claim beyond the doubt. Aha! Tough words, let's see you pull this one off. Let's see, this evidence that proves why the clock is running slow. Returned home from aboard from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. Oh. It was 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. <laughs> the victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. <laughs> and that's why the time you heard. That's why the time you heard when you struck her. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you and Mr. Switch, or should I say, Mr. Did It? It just. Order. Order, I say. and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? I have to say, I'm impressed. I think I've seen someone who can the defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality of formality this is only a formality, but the court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. A. <laughs> and with that, this court is adjourned. Turns out that Frank Swig was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of Ooh, that day. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sweet let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Swit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. Oh. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. 
<sighs> I still can't believe we won. <clears throat> right, good job in there. Congratulations. And for this, you I owe it all to you. Not at all. Not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the chief. Oh, <laughs> I've never seen the chief look this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must be. My life is over! Larry! Oh, Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Aw, oh, Nick. Don't worry about it. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no. I mean, bad. Bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but, my Cindy Windy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was... Uh, never mind. <laughs> what was he about to say? Congratulations, Harry. Practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts, innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I is this <laughs> sleep? Uh, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate dinner. Movies, my treat. Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh well, yeah. Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one... I made one for her and one for me. Oh. Really? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that shit. And, and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you want to just cry? I mean, she's dead, bro. Larry? Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she felt quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me, Sophia. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right? Right. Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about me? Oh, huh. Well, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? Hey, Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she tried. Whatever, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy box. Take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really? I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of the evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen, learn, grow strong. 
Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner on me? We'll drink? We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him? Er, uh, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Ooh. And so my first child came to a place. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have a friend. Or good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us unless you count the clock he gave me. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And I promised to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that wouldn't be able to keep. That I wouldn't be able to keep. Alright you guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!